Let's uh, start off today talking with Elliot Hamilton of The Daily Wire. I enjoyed our conversation a few weeks ago, and I wanted to get him on again. And I think we're probably going to talk about a variety of topics. You can follow him. Uh, I can't remember his Twitter handle. We'll get to that later. Uh, but you can see his articles at The Daily Wire. You can probably just Google him, or not Google him, search for him on Twitter under Elliot, two L's, two T's, Hamilton. Uh, but Elliot, thanks for joining me, and let's start off talking about the Anne Frank Center, which I think may have been overreaching a little bit. Well, one, it's great to be back. Thank you for inviting me over again. And the Anne Frank Center, what's where to begin? So they have really been going off the rails. I'm, everyone's been listening in about. I, I would imagine people who don't know what the Anne Frank Anne Frank Center is. It's this institute. It's this group of people in this organization that that calls itself so that calls itself interested in mutual respect. I'll just describe what what it's all about. So their mission, supposedly according to their website, is a that it's meant to use through education programs to call out prejudice, counter it it counters discrimination, advocates for a kinder and fairer world as Anne Frank who was who wrote the famous diary of her of her days hiding from the Nazis in in Holland, and their whole premise is that we want to be a better society. We need to treat each other better, and this is the best way to go about it. Unfortunately, such a noble goal, is in the, under the name of a young girl, noble. who's stated goal for a much better world. Yeah, their stated goal, I should say. Yeah, you're right. To make a better world, as Anne Frank had dreamt of it, is now turned is now become a major, major leftist front to go up against Trump. And the last couple of months, they've really gone off the off the hinges, trying to say that Trump is an anti-Semite, racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, and everything under the sun that the left tends to say and tends to label conservatives. And mm -hmm. even and recently, in today, for example, they started going after Trump because during his Day in Poland, and I, I'm not going to comment so much on what he said during the during his Poland speech. All I heard was that it was a very positive Western civilization mm -hmm. speech, but he gave that speech in front of a memorial to the resistance fighters who went up against the Nazis and the Soviets, and he gave a really good speech, from what I was told, but the Anne Frank Center exploded because he didn't go over to the memorial memorializing <laughs> the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, which was one of the greatest examples of Zionist resistance against right. oppression. And they said that that was, a, that was an affront to the Jewish community and it's a continuation of Trump's, of, of Trump's really nasty attitudes yeah, to I the wanna Jewish just, people. I want to just uh, go on one thing you said, that they've made a turn. I'm of the belief, I did a little research on this, uh, that they haven't made a turn. This was always their intention, and I believe they're a Southern poverty poverty law center type scam, of which we have some on the right, which is most interested in fundraising, and I'm guessing it is there to appeal to elderly leftist uh, Jews who uh, you want to think they're giving money to a good cause, and it's to this guy. And when we get to a little bit more into it, I'll explain who Stephen Goldstein, the man behind it, is. If you look at what he did before founding the so-called Ian Frank Center, you get an idea what his agenda is. He's, uh, something tells me he's not exactly too into Judaism. This is a way to scam money off people, to attack Trump. And frankly, I'm a little disgusted about this, uh, being Jewish. How dare he use Anne Frank's name? I can only imagine what the reaction would be would if someone on the right used Harvey Milk's name or, I don't know, Jermaine Stewart's name to talk about protection from jihad for an organization and try to bilk people for money. So, I mean, that to me is the thing that stood out with like 30 seconds of research on Stephen Goldstein, the man behind this. Well, I will say that the Anne Frank Center has been around for decades. And for, and for a long period of time, they were kind of, you sure? they did their thing. They did, they, they put forth their shtick, which I had, generally I had no issue with it in principle because obviously the goal for everyone is to try to be nice, is to be better to each other and try to look at ourselves on the basis of our character rather than like the immutable characteristics or religion and everything else. But you're right. Goldstein is going out there and turned the Anne Frank Center, this remarkable organization and bastardized it in the, for the purposes of the resistance. And you've seen this, this isn't 
only the Anne Frank Center that's been the Anne Frank Center that's been doing this. The ADL has been doing it, and all these other predominantly Jewish organizations that were founded upon justifiable causes. A lot, a lot of it was based off of fighting against anti-Semitism, and a lot of it was based off the idea and the premise that we should be better to each other. And now they have turned the, they've turned turtle and flipped up, flipped the up, flipped the script, and then decided to use their Judaism or use their Jewish character, so to speak as a means to attack conservatives, to attack the right, and to attack Donald Trump. Okay. And oh, that's, yeah, one, one, of, thing, and that's yeah. one of the points, and you're right about that. Well, and I'm looking at the Wikipedia entry right here, and, uh, you know, there's nothing that it did before 2011. I mean, apparently from 2011 to 2016, the center had a small public gallery in lower Manhattan. In 2016, the board of directors brought in Goldstein as executive director, at the same time, its name was changed to add mutual respect, and its mission was changed to, to include an emphasis on, quote, exposing and fighting hate. Uh, the, senator, the center continues to put on traveling exhibits, blah, 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 and it received significant press attention in early 2017. Now, apparently, there have been uh, some disputes about its founding. Let me just read a little bit more, then we can talk about this. According to the center... Go, uh, Hello? Website. Go to... Go yeah, but I'm not looking at its website. Its website is going to have something that advocates it. It may not be true. But the Atlantic Magazine reported in April 2017 that past staff, uh, staffers and documentation include, indicate, actually started in 77, no involvement by Otto Frank. Okay. Uh, but it's at most an affiliate. It brings tra traveling exhibits. And there's just something very suspicious about all of this to me. I can't help but notice that. And uh, the choice of Stephen Goldstein is very... Very curious. He's the guy from Garden State Equality. I mean, I don't know of any, uh, I, uh, you know, transphobia. Really, really, that's the mission. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Go on. Sorry, I had to point that out to the listeners, though. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot there's there's a lot of information out there, but general, but you're but you're correct in the sense that. They've definitely it it, ha, it the fact that it's been more active in the last couple of years has, is a little bit off. The fact that but what was pissing me off and what has what's been the main what's been my main message for the last couple of couple of hours going after the Anne Frank Center is yeah. simply put their bastardization of Jewish values and using using the memory of a Holocaust victim in order to propagate leftism. And the problem is is that. Anyone who understands what Nazism is, the National Socialist, a lot of the ideas that Hitler promulgated have very progressively sounding yep. ideals to them. Well, Obviously, he took it. He took it to a much farther. It took it to a much farther extreme, and then went out, went out, went all out in genocide. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of what he was doing in Germany, a lot of what he was looking forward to, was from a socialist perspective, and. Yeah. That's an unfortunate, and that's it's an unfortunate truth that a lot of people on the left refuse to understand. A lot of people mm -hmm. like to say that Nazism is a far right ideology, and Absolutely. probably to an extent you would argue that that it may as well be, but that doesn't change that the socialist aspects of it. And you argue this, you if you were to ever argue this point with a socialist or a communist, one of the problems that they'll say is that what the the their most typical response is, yeah. He, I'm not talking about his socialist policies. I had no issues with those. I was my issue was with the genocide. Yeah. And I said, so what you're saying is that if he had not committed genocide and actually huh. fulfilled more of the obligations of socialism as to what Lenin, Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, and all the others said, right. you would likely have no issue with that. They don't like to go to the next logical step. Great point. Great point. Yeah. I mean, look, names and labels are thrown around, and it's often not so easy to define what is left and what is right. And certainly there were things that were more conservative uh, or in keeping with conservatism in Germany at the time there. But come on. I mean, it's National Socialist for a reason. This was uh, – the military was never so big on Hitler over there. It was not like former officers were so supportive of him. And let me just add one thing before we bury the Anne Frank Center story. Uh, I just something else I didn't mention before uh, is Abraham Foxman, who was criticized often from the right for 
leading the leftist anti-defamation league uh, and having a bias there. He's been very critical of uh, the Anne Frank Center. Uh, he's retired now. He said, every time I read that he, Goldstein, says something under her banner, I feel uncomfortable. And it mentions that Foxman was himself a hidden child during the Holocaust. And one last thing, in a Washington Post profile, Goldstein rejected accusations that he is politicizing Anne Frank and called her one of the greatest feminist and social justice leaders in history. Please, come on. And, you know, she may have written a diary, but she wasn't a leader, obviously. She never had the chance. So I I am just disgusted by this guy and if look, you look this and I'm just going to continue on with your point about Abe Foxman. Abe Foxman when he was when he was the president of the ADL, he did a remarkable remarkable job in fighting back against anti-Semitism and standing up for standing up against racism and bigotry. I will I will not say anything negative in that regard towards oh, I got Foxman. Some problems, Foxman but okay. was a great guy, but. I what I will so. say okay. is that the that there was a time when the ADL what, that the ADL refused, and I'm just going to flat out say, bold it, underline it, refused to acknowledge that the far left and radical Islam started having a much greater influence in American society, and was one of the reasons why anti-Semitism was as high as it was. Yep. The ADL still to this day, still to this day, has a tremendous problem with acknowledging far left and radical Islamist anti Semitism. And one and unfortunately, Jonathan Greenblatt, the successor to Foxman, has been continuing this the ADL's mission to try to Oh it's gotten worse. Cover up progressive anti Semitism because it doesn't make in my view it's either because he is willfully blind to left wing anti Semitism or He's just trying to brush it under the uh, under the carpet for political convenience. Well, I think it's more and than that, so Elliot. It's uh, look, Foxman may have leaned left, but his background was with the ADL. He was there for several decades. They plucked Jonathan Greenblatt, who's a relatively young guy, out of you know he had a leftist resume. He was an Obama guy. I mean, it's yep. what do you expect? Oh, and they, sure. that was a calculated decision to do that. It wasn't like a surprise to anyone. They just confirmed what a lot of us already suspected about, you know, I don't know. I'm of the belief that Abraham Foxman was not so great, but every once in a while had to um, had to do things that seemed like he was even-handed and, you know, just to keep the facade up. I don't know, as the ACLU even does sometimes. Uh, this guy, it I don't think they're the, even It was always him. the donors. It was yeah. always the donors. That was, great that's point. Been, Great point. And unfortunately, that's been the case with Jewish organizations across the country because a lot of mainstream Jewish organizations have been have were initially turned off on Trump because of some of the problematic things that he ended up saying. Look, I was never I was a never Trumper. I had my own issues with him as well. But right. You're at the Daily was, Wire. We know how they the are. Moment, yeah. <laughs> not everyone at the Daily Wire was such. But for me, like as soon as Trump won, it was about okay, he's the president elect, and now. Never Trump's dead, and now mm-hmm. we gotta move, we gotta move on and call balls and strikes. But the left is going out there and saying that I'll just says I'll be damned if we're going to accept Trump as the and Trump as our president. And the, unfortunately, a good swath of the Jewish community and a lot of them are in positions of power and influence. Kind of, kind of made it so that there has to be some sort of way that Trump won, and it was likely because of anti-Semitism. They kept pushing that canard for so long. Yep. Up until the point yep. where a fake news writer who who had been fired from the Intercept, the Intercept. Wait, can you give a little background caught, on what the Intercept was, was, is? Just not everyone oh, knows. Oh, the Intercept is is the Intercept is Glenn Greenwald, Greenwald's mm-hmm. brag of conspiratorial nonsense. That, that's mm-hmm. there's nothing there's nothing more else to say about it. But if somebody gets fired from the Intercept right. because of fake news, then that says that says certainly one thing but then this guy wait 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 wait, wait 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 greenwald from my understanding and you can correct me if i'm wrong has pretty he's his politics are far to the left and he's not mine but i don't want to treat everyone at on the left who's a decent journalist at least by the profession standards as if they're cnn or jim acosta or something like some of them have <laughs> journalistic integrity and i hate to say it greenwald's politics are not mine but i think he's a pretty decent journalist um 
you know, I, I, I think I, I'm not, and I, I didn't comment on his, on the on the quality of his work. I think okay. the intercept. I think the intercept's a problem. Greenwald, okay. Greenwald, regardless, of, reg- I will say this all: Greenwald, being who he is, I will disagree with him on practically everything. I, it's very hard for me to find a moment a moment in which he was intellectually inconsistent, and I'll give him credit for it. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's not a stupid guy. He's one of the yeah. sm- he's one of the smartest guys on the left. And honestly, conservatives need to recognize that and not and not minimize him. Trash the intercept all you want, but but watch it, watch him. But mm-hmm. there was a guy. But, one, but, but back in March, there was a guy who once wrote for the Intercept was fired because he published a fake news story, ended up getting arrested by the FBI because Whoa. he made all these crank ball, bomb threat calls to JCCs. Now this oh, guy was there, far he was expected, that guy worked for the Intercept. No kidding. I know who you're talking about the black guy in Missouri, right? He got dumped by his Jewish girlfriend. Yeah, that's it. Yep, he, he once worked for the Intercept. And then the rest of the JCC bomb threat call came from came from, came from a kid, a mental a mentally ill kid mm-hmm. out in um, Ashkelon in Israel. And there was been and but the ADL for the longest time kept trying to push that oh yep. it's the far right oh it's the far right oh it's the alt right barely 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 even apologized. If I don't think they even apologized after all that. Greenblatt and Greenblatt just said nothing about it whatsoever. So. Unfortunately, this is what you're seeing in major in major Jewish organizations, especially those whose leaders and uh, oftentimes donors are lean more closely to the left. Well, the problem, and this is just the problem of Jewish politics. Yeah, but I think the there's States. there's two things we need to talk about there. And can I keep you on a few more minutes? I know it's longer than expected, but this is interesting, and we're in the middle of something now. And you know, I try to keep it loose with time here. Do you have a few more minutes? Yes, of course. Okay, great. Uh, well, no, you're a busy guy, so I can't take it for granted, but thank you. <laughs> um, I think there are a couple things going on here, and it applies to APAC. There are a lot of Jewish organizations that came in response to a very specific purpose. For example, B'nai B'rif. I went to a dinner of theirs years ago. It's like an organization that has existed for a long time and probably has some assets and is in search of a mission. They honored a guy I knew who passed away, an older guy who once owned the Philadelphia Eagles, a real estate guy. And named Jerry Woolman, and but he couldn't even explain what the B'nai B'rith is today. And frankly, I think that applies to APAC to a large extent too. Like it's a huge, unwieldy organization that has a structure that is in need of a mission, trying to be all things for two pe- all people. And frankly, with technology, with Twitter, etc., you know, you don't have to be so big anymore. I mean, we have a pretty small operation here, and you can have more influence than a lot of these big, long-standing organizations. And I think the other thing to address in the Jewish world is. The demographics with Judaism, I don't even know if you're religious or not, are some are such that it's becoming more and more of a divide between religious Jews, which are quickly growing in number in America, higher and higher por- uh, proportion of the That's American correct. Jewish population, and secular Jews. And frankly, all the organizations are pretty much secular Jews. Uh, yes, some religious Jews go to APAC every year. But the reality is religious Jews are involved with their Jewish institutions where they're going to services every day, where they, you know, or Chabad in a more general sense, which is growing faster than anyone. And the secular Jewish organizations are like sort of a $2,000 a year synagogue, which people go to twice a year. Um, and it's, it's a way to check off doing something Jewish as opposed to actually living a Jewish life involving praying every day if you're male uh, with, a, with a minion, keeping kosher and all the pain in the butt stuff that involves with real, that's involved with real Judaism. That's my perspective and respond however you want, but I had to get that out there. Well, you're absolutely correct that this is ultimately a divide and it's the same thing in Israel right now. There's really a divide. Well, it's a lot worse in Israel for a lot of different reasons. I don't think but it yeah, is, though, is but Israelis have things bringing them together. I, You know, Israelis are pretty comfortable being Jewish if they served in the military. They live in a Jewish state. They don't have to make any effort beyond that, as opposed to American Jews who are secular who really have to prove themselves, have to remind themselves they're Jewish. I'm, only, just, I'm saying Israel insofar as that the ultra-Orthodoxy, the Haredi Jews, yes. tend to ha- are starting to have a lot more influence than every other sect of Judaism, including like some of the more not too ultra orthodox Jews, so they're having their own issues as well. So yeah. I would that's say that from, to from that perspective, yes. But more religious, the, more kids. As far as and, Jewish identity, yeah. 
as far as of Jewish identity, Israel does not have as big of an issue mm-hmm. with with the citizens of Israel trying to figure out what their Jewish identity is compared to the United mm-hmm. States. In the United States, it is far, far worse. And yes, in a way, a lot of what you're seeing is that those who tend to be more in tune with their Jewish identity stand closer to Jewish values, whether it's just religious or just, or just standing by for the values of themselves, just sticking for traditional Judeo-Christian society values, you'll see those people leaning more conservative, like myself. Mm-hmm. There will then, of course, those who are more secular are, are more divorced from the Jewish from the Jewish values, the old school Jewish values, and they tend to be more liberal. And one of the problems is that lib- that secular and more liberal Judaism has kind of divorced it because it's divorced itself from so many of the aspects of halacha that are that make That's Jewish law, by the way, for people, people listening. Yes, yes, Jewish law that you tend to see more people losing sight as to who they are, what the, what what their purpose is, and what does it mean to be a Jew. And when you have that type of void, then you can have people who are catchy and have charisma trying to define what your Judaism is. And when mm-hmm. people try to say, this is what my Judaism is, and they talk a big, they make a big song and dance about social justice, tikkun olam, peace, etc., then people start buying into it. And that's why you have organizations like J Street, why you have organizations that... that like the Anne Frank Center and and the ADL. So yeah. the problem is, is this is something that American Jewry really does need to figure out is who are they? What 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 do they represent? What are their values? And once you figure out what your values are and you and my view is what are your values? Go right back to the Torah. Go right back to the to the words of the prophets. Mm-hmm. Go back to those. Figure out what they mean and Stand by them unapologetically, because the moment that you have ground foot, a solid footing in your principles, you will not question yourself, and you will. The only people that you will question will be those who, like yourself, are interested in the pursuit of knowledge, and then you can spar back and forth like they did in the days of the Talmud. So, we just—that's my issue with the Jewish community—is that yeah. we have a lack of purpose, we have a lack of perspective as to who we really are. Are we Jews with trembling knees, or are we fighting Jews? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to bring it back to the Anne Frank Center for a second, because I am really bothered, you know, having learned today before our interview what this is really about, by the exploitation of her. Because, to me, it's even worse than if you had had, a, like, an adult and they were using their name. Like, frankly, I think a lot of people in the Reagan Battalion were doing from, that's my understanding from, during some research, but I don't want to go there. But Anne Frank wasn't a leader. She wasn't even a hero. She was, and I'm not taking anything away from her, she was like, what, 13, 14-year-old girl who wrote a diary and happened to show a lot of potential as a writer, really deep insights for a 13, 14-year-old. She wasn't a leader. She was just an ordinary girl and not particularly involved with Judaism. That's why it's so disgusting. It's so calculated and cynical to me to be doing this and to attach her to transphobia and stuff like that. It's just so shameless. The guy really is disgusting. And how dare anyone quote this guy without explaining who he is? Like, with the media treating him as if he's some Jewish leader, as if it's someone out of Crown Heights or something with a big following? It may well be one person working there and five interns. And I look, they don't even have revenues of a million dollars a year. They don't even have costs of a million. By the way, the costs were higher than the revenues, according to my very distinguished source at Wikipedia. I'm just so bothered by it. And how dare that be a representative of Judaism? I don't know. I'm with you I'm with you there. If they want to continue leftists leftists who try to use Judaism in order to propagate leftism don't understand what Judaism is. And if you think that's what Judaism is, then you're actually thinking about leftism and what is your true religion? Is it Judaism or is it leftism? Because those two are categorically opposite. Yep. And uh, based on Stephen Goldstein's background, uh, uh, there's a part of Leviticus he's probably very uncomfortable with, given what his history of activism has been mostly toward, uh, you know. So I'd like to see him explain that one, or at least someone, you know, who's treating him like it's it's Moses descending from the heavens. Ask him about that particular part of Leviticus, and he's with that part of the Torah. But, of course, uh, the media that just retweets him and poses and treats him like an authority, the way they do with the Southern Poverty Law Center, 
you know, as if it's the gospel. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It's just frustrating. Any uh, final thoughts as we wind down here? Because uh, I saw a lot of articles you did, and they were good and a lot of great tweets, but we've been so much on one topic, I don't really want to pursue it beyond that. Maybe stuff related to Israel. Uh, I know you co- did something else Jewishly. I just don't have it in front of me right now. Oh, you know, I know what it was. I know what it was. The march uh, where LGBT, not to dwell on that, for Israel, were not allowed to participate in Chicago. You did write about that, right? Yes, I did. And final thoughts on that. Progressivism is, a, is the enemy of the, of the Jewish people, and until the Jews start realizing that progressivism is inherently anti-Semitic, then there will be a lot more people waking up and smelling the coffee for that. Does, does progressivism really have to be inherently anti-Semitic? And if so, can you explain that? All, all one needs to do is read Karl Marx's On the Jewish Question, because the way that he kind of framed it was that the Jewish people needed to liberate themselves from Judaism. And they said that huckstering is the real religion of the Jews, and so is money. And that right. was the argument he ended up making. So... And if that is the Marxist view, if this is the guy, if this is the view of the guy who founded the ideology of communism, then therefore, by that logic, if you actually subscribe to Marxist philosophy and you're an honest and keyword honest believer in socialism and communism, you have to understand that part of the system of in the economic system he wants to impose is of the belief that the things that he, that Marx himself thought were under the control of the Jews. It just goes right back. It, this was the precursor, in a way, to the Protocols of the Elder Desire. The yep. words that Marx ended up writing are practically, practically indistinguishable from what Hitler wrote from what so many other nasty anti-Semites have ever written. And those who are blinded to this reality are either willful, just like I said about Greenblatt on progressive anti-Semitism, you're either willfully blind or you're ignoring it for political convenience. Great points, Elliot, and it's been excellent having you on. Can you remind me what your uh, Twitter handle is so people can follow you? It's Elliot R. Hams, and as you pointed out in the beginning, it's double L, double T in the first net. And I forgot to mention it earlier. I hope you had a good Malia Obama day. And you can look up what he wrote to know what I'm talking about. That's the leftist term for July 4th. And also, happy today, uh, happy President George W. Bush's birthday. I have to mention that as well. Yeah. God, God bless Jim. God bless Debbie. <laughs> Josh Hammer, my good, my, my good friend and brother, he said, imperfect conservative, but he was the man who stood firm in defense of America after 9-11 and that's something that we can never, never forget. Well put. Great having you on, Elliot. Hope to have you on again before too long.